Look, there's a lot that I wish I had known about my dog Starbuck before I got him as a puppy. Because here's the thing, yes, I absolutely love and adore him now, but honestly, raising him as a puppy was nothing like I had expected. I had watched a bunch of YouTube videos on puppy training, and they all made it look so easy. But as I quickly discovered, puppies, as cute as they are, aren't easy. They're a lot more work than YouTube videos make them out to be. But I'll tell you, it's absolutely worth it. 10 out of 10, I'd do it all again. There's just some things which I wish I had known, which would have made the puppy phase a lot easier. One, your puppy is going to try to eat everything. I swear, every day that he was a puppy, I'd find that Starbuck had found something new in the house to chew and eat that day. It honestly feels like puppies have a death wish. Starbuck ate my rug, he ate my coffee table, he ate my wall, he tried to eat acorns, which are very poisonous for dogs, he once ate a power cable, while it was plugged in, and he even chewed up a magnet, which is actually very dangerous for dogs and can easily mm -hmm. kill them. Because if a dog swallows two different magnet pieces inside their body, those two magnet pieces can attract and crush organs along the way. So of course we ended up at the vet. I cried saying, I'm such a bad owner, he eats everything. And she laughed and said, it's normal. Don't feel bad, dogs don't have hands like we humans do, so they use their mouths to learn about the world. As he gets older, he'll learn not to eat everything in sight. And honestly, she was right. Now that he's an adult, yes, he'll still eat food that he finds on the ground, but luckily he won't eat random things anymore. Two, high energy working breeds are easier to train, but they're a lot more work. So this is my sister's dog, Charlie. He is a gorgeous caboodle. He was bred to be a companion dog. And this of course is my dog, Starbuck. He is a Swedish Fellhund. Despite his small size, he was, like corgis, bred to be a working dog on a farm and to herd cattle. Well, with Charlie, if he gets to sit on your lap all day and play with you, he is a very happy dog. And growing up, my parents' dog, Jamie, was also a companion dog. So I just assumed that all dogs were like this, but, Nope. I quickly discovered that as a working dog, if Starbucks' brain doesn't get challenged each day, he'll get bored and start making his own fun by eating my pillows. Which is why I taught Starbucks scent training. What I do is I get him to lie down and wait in a separate room. Then I take a small container with holes in it and I put a cotton bud inside of it that has a smelly essential oil on it. I then hide the container somewhere in the house. He is then instructed to go find it. He sniffs all over the house, trying to find it. It is very, very cute to watch. And when he does find it, he will do a lie down next to it, marking it. I then give him some of his dinner. This is usually how I feed him at mealtimes. And as I'm saying this aloud, it sounds really hard and complex, but honestly, he picked it up so easily. He picked it up after just one training session. And that's because Starbuck is incredibly motivated to work because he is a working dog. This is what brings him joy. Whereas with Charlie, I'm still trying to teach him scent training, but it's a work in progress. He gets bored easily and just tries to get you to play with him instead. I love keeping Starbuck on his toes with training, but most people I know would prefer the ease of a companion dog. So just be honest with yourself before you bring a dog into your life. Three, your puppy doesn't want to eat its food from a bowl. So growing up, my family's dogs all ate their dinners from a food bowl. So when my vet handed me a pamphlet titled Contra Free Loading, I was a bit confused. <laughs> Contra Free Loading is the phenomena that most animals, including dogs, have where they want to earn their food. It's an utterly foreign concept to us humans. We just want to sit down at the dinner table and eat our food in peace. Whereas it turns out that dogs want to earn their dinner, they find the food bowl boring. And dog food toys can be an easy way to enrich a dog's life. For example, you can get them a lick pad, freeze dog food in it, and they have to lick it out. And you can get them a Kong, put dog food in it, freeze it, and they have to chew it and figure out how to thaw it to get it out. And you can get them a treat bowl, put food in it, and they have to bounce it and roll it around and get it out. And if you take a look at the hierarchy of dog needs, you'll see in the top section is cognitive needs, which includes novelty. So it's best not to just get one, but to get multiple different dog toys and cycle between them to keep it fresh and fun for your dog. And speaking of novelty, dogs find human walks boring. So most people walk their dogs like this. They just go for a walk around the block and their dog walks beside them on a short leash. Maybe their owners will let them stop and sniff a bush occasionally, but that's it. 
And at first I tried to walk Starbuck like this too, but I quickly got very confused. <laughs> he didn't seem to want to walk. He just wanted to stop and sniff everything. And of course he did. I later learned that dogs' noses have over 100 million receptor sites compared to our measly 6 million. My vet once said to me, a dog going for a walk and not sniffing is like someone taking you for a walk and blindfolding you. Yes, you'd technically get exercise, but you'd enjoy it much more if you could see. I'd hate to go for every walk blindfolded, so why would I do that to him? So here's how I now walk Starbuck. He'll be on a five to 10 meter leash, which is 16 to 32 feet. We walk along grassy park areas and he will wander to the right and to the left, sniffing whatever he likes. This lets him make choices and have novel experiences. His nose will often lead him to climb into bushes. I do get a lot of strange looks from dog owners all walking their dogs on short leashes, wondering what on earth my dog is doing. But honestly, he absolutely loves it. Five, you might get puppy blues from being sleep deprived, and this is normal. So when I first picked up Starbuck, he was eight weeks old, and from the ages of eight to 12 weeks, an average puppy can hold its bladder for one to two hours, maybe three if they're deeply sleeping. So each night for the first four weeks, I would get woken up by Starbuck multiple times in the night, crying to go outside. The broken sleep turned me into a walking zombie during the day. I was miserable. And that's when I discovered in my desperation that puppy blues is a real phenomena. Puppy blues is the feeling of regret and disappointment a lot of people feel after getting a puppy. And honestly, it's hard not to feel like you've made a mistake getting a puppy when it won't let you sleep. Not getting sleep is a form of torture. Puppy blues is similar to postnatal depression, whose number one cause is, you guessed it, broken sleep from babies waking you up in the night. But remember when you're going through this that they're not puppies forever, and actually, puppies grow up way faster than human children. By the time a puppy is three months old, they can hold their bladder for about one hour per one month that they're alive consistently. So by eight months, Starbuck was sleeping eight hours through the night easily. There is no magical fix for puppy blues, I'm sorry. You've just got to be patient until they get old enough to hold their bladders. And try to keep in mind while you're going through it that your lack of sleep is going to be making you less rational and it's gonna be intensifying the feelings that you're feeling. For example, six, your puppy will bite you. Try to not take it personally. Look, as a puppy, Starbuck bit me a lot. If I tried to pet him, he'd bite me. If I tried to clip a leash on him, he'd bite me. If I tried to play with him, he'd bite me. In desperation, when I'd had him for two weeks, I emailed a dog behaviorist and basically said, my puppy is biting me. I think he is growing into an aggressive dog, help. And bless her heart, she emailed back almost immediately saying, hi Sarah, puppies bite a lot. Many puppy owners don't understand that it's normal for puppies to bite. He sounds like a normal dog. It sounds like you care a lot about him and are doing great. She also pointed out that as a puppy, the way Starbuck was playing with his litter mates before I got him was through play fighting. Dogs have much thicker skin than us. Small bites don't hurt each other. And suddenly it all clicked. Of course he's biting me 24 seven. Why should he magically know that I hate him biting me when from his perspective, biting is great. So what I did was I put toys everywhere in the house. My house looked like a toy store. Anytime he would bite me, I'd give him a chew toy. It took about two months, but eventually he bit me a lot less. Seven, puppy teeth hurt a lot. So just another warning, puppy teeth hurt way more than adult dog teeth. I'll be honest, I had many tearful nights where I'd cry from how much his bites hurt my hands and my arms. And there's a reason why they hurt so much. See, here's one of Starbucks baby teeth. It looked like a needle. Adult dog teeth on the other hand are much bigger. They aren't as sharp and pointy. That's why they hurt less if they do mouth you during play. Plus puppies are still learning. They need to learn how hard they can bite someone during play before it starts to hurt. And honestly, the only way that Starbuck consistently learned this was by me setting up playdates with adult dogs. It's a good way for puppies to learn bite inhibition because an adult dog during play can tell a puppy that it bites them too hard and say, no, that's not nice to do that in a language that they actually understand. Eight, dogs look terrifying when they play if you're not used to it. 
There are so many times that Starbuck will meet a dog on the street while on a walk and start play fighting with them. As they snap and growl at each other during play, the owners will be alarmed and yell, no Fido, stop it, play nice. Not realizing that both dogs are playing nice and having a lot of fun. And honestly, I was taken aback by how scary dogs look when they play fight with each other when I first saw it. They bite each other, they pin one another to the ground, they even snap at their faces and their necks. But it turns out that they're just playing pretend and they're actually taking turns winning and losing. I highly recommend seeing if there are any puppy playgroups around where you live. We had a puppy playgroup here where dog trainers would let you bring your puppy in and they'd have them play with other puppies. The trainers would watch them, making sure that the dogs were having a good time. They'd also explain what they were doing in their different play moves. This helped me stop worrying that Starbuck was trying to kill other dogs when he was playing. 9. Dogs have been bred to understand body language, not human words. So despite watching a million different YouTube videos on teaching your puppy recall, for weeks I just couldn't get Starbuck to do it consistently. That was until I reached out to a dog trainer who told me that rather than trying to teach Starbuck the word come, I should instead be teaching him the touch command. And once I switched to doing that, he got it immediately. And so now, instead of saying, come Starbuck, I now just hold out my hand, say touch, and Starbuck will run up to it and boop it with his nose. Over the centuries of dogs becoming domesticated, they haven't learned to understand our words. Instead, the reason why we've been able to train and work with them is that they have learned to understand our body language. And so now when I teach him commands, I pair it with hand gestures. These work much better. It's much easier and faster than training him with just words. 10. Puppies are a lot like children, which is why I promise you it gets easier with time. It's true, when you first get a puppy, like a baby, it can't control its bladder. It's exhausting having to take it outside to pee all the time, but just like how children do eventually learn to be potty trained, so do puppies. And when children are young, they want your attention all the time. They want to play with you all the time, and so do puppies. But like adults, as they get older, they learn to enjoy chilling out and enjoy quiet time of just resting and looking out the window. And so yes, the honest truth is that the puppy period is probably going to be pretty intense. It was definitely intense for me. However, I do promise you that when they become an adult dog, they learn to chill out a lot. <laughs> and it will be so, so worth it. I know it was for me. So then, did my video help you? If so, please subscribe, and to learn more about how to enrich your dog's life, be sure to check out the next video from me on screen. I'll see you over in the next video.